Sons Unleashed. G'day ladies and gents, Robbie Turner's my name, welcome to another episode of Axons Unleashed. I've got to say, Luke, you're here with me, it's been like a month since we've done one of these. It's been a minute, it's been a hot minute, man, I'm yeah. so sorry, it's yeah. truth, we've just ticked, oh, what are we, 5th or 6th July 2024? The and we're back. The 9th. The 9th. Good, that's... <laughs> Everything's approximate. I just did spend. Yeah. A, I just spent a massive weekend down in Melbourne on the piss watching. Some I lost footy. a few days. So I've lost a few days. <laughs> <laughs> and apologies to those clients I spoke to. I was very present during that time. I promise. <laughs> but mate, we've got a um, an interesting twist on twist on today's yeah. podcast guest. When the when the names come through, I'm like, oh, I don't know these guys. So we just had a quick bite to eat across the road there to get to know them a little bit. So I know somewhat questions to ask them. But like, I fucking know that guy. Yeah, I was like, holy shit! What? The, how did this come about? What's going on here? And, it's, and I have to say, it was one of those. And when our paths crossed, he, whilst I was an officer, he was an OR, there was a there was a, a really unique relationship that I developed. We weren't even in the same troop. Like, we were we were separate completely. But we just had this, you know, kind of connection with, he's a fucking good bloke, he's a good bloke. <laughs> How you going, sir? Hey, mate, there you go. Yeah. And for those who have been following us for a little while, we all know Luke is just an OR and an officer's <laughs> fucking shirt. <show. laughs> and I actually got to be both, so I know what that actually means. Yes. Hey, so we've got uh, Brody and Mick from Medilinks. Lads, thank you so much for being here. Really looking forward to you guys telling a story and just some insights about who you who you were and why you joined the military and what your transition was like uh, is impactful. Like, do not fucking hang up for this podcast team. There's going to be some little little nuggets of gold coming your way, and I just I know for a fact that someone that listens to this will be like, I'm so glad I just heard bloody you know Mick speak about how we transition because I now yep. want to follow that path. Yep. And we we talk about identifying problem sets uh, and potentially not doing anything with the identification of that except whinging, right? And we've had a couple of people on the podcast that are like, nope, fuck that. I'm actually going to go and do something about it. So I'm really excited to, to talk today and go through how you guys, how you, mate, and then you collectively said, no, no, we're going to bring this service to the defence community because it's what we want to do. And as we were saying, like you've got to go through an element of Purging yourself from the military. Yep. What, what do you call it? Cut the umbilical cord? Yeah. You probably got that from me. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but like, if you're trying to forge a new career and trying to be someone else, you can't be still looking at the bloody the, the steps behind you. The, the so, you know, I went and sold all my shit and got a couple hundred bucks worth, <laughs> worth at, to, at, the, at the, you know, disposal store or whatever else. <laughs> I guess some uh, people are going to do that again. None of the issued stuff, mate. None of the issued stuff. <laughs> I didn't give a fuck. I, mate, once I handed my ID card in, those motherfuckers were not in, not in charge of me anymore. Anymore, <laughs> so I can, <laughs> I can sell whatever the fuck I L&D. want. Yeah. All right. Hey, so the good point is, um, and just quickly, these guys now run a business together. So we, I'm really, really, and and the the industry that you're in and the services you provide is never more important and never more impactful. So yeah, Mick and Bro, who wants to go first, lads? Yeah, I'm happy to go first. Yeah, yeah sure. Man. Welcome, oh, Brody. Yeah, good, to, good to see you, mate. Yeah. Thanks for being Axons Unleashed. I really appreciate. Yeah, appreciate it. You've oh, driven man. down from the sunny coast, mate. Yeah. So it's not a mean feat. No, yeah. yeah. Well, what, what a terrible place to be as well. Far out. <laughs> oh, shit out. You're welcome. <laughs> the Gold Coast, far out. Yeah, yeah it's tough. Nah, mate. it's beautiful. Yeah. So uh, tell us, mate, where'd you grow up? Why'd you join the military? What is your basic training like? Yeah, um, so I was probably about 15 years old. Uh, you know, my, my dad always wanted to be in the Air Force. Unfortunately, he was colorblind. He wanted to be a pilot. Uh, so he got knocked back, but, you know, he kind of uh, talked a mate of his into becoming a pilot and then kind of lived vicariously through him and his experience experiences. So uh, he was, uh, you know, a caribou pilot. He was fly- flying around um, some SAS guys and he was telling me some, some pretty cool some warriors. Cool stories. Yeah, some real cool stories. And I was like, that, that sounds pretty cool. Maybe I'll look into that. So he told me to read a book called Amazing SAS, and I remember reading that book, just getting really inspired, yep. um, and you know, wanting to go down that that infantry path. Um, so yeah, when I was um, I was 16 years old, uh, you know, in year 12, I applied actually to do a gap year as a rifleman, um, and. I actually got knocked back from that uh, application uh, because... What, what was that? What was the driver behind them knocking a strapping young lad <laughs> back, mate? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know whether it was a really genius uh, recruitment uh, <laughs> move because, um, you know, I, I didn't take that no for, for an answer and I, you know, pushed back straight yeah. away and said, no, I, I do know what I'm getting myself in for because that was the main reason I got, I got knocked back. Yep. They said, you don't really know what you're getting yourself in for, so we're not going to, um, you know, accept your application. I said, oh, I'm, ha- I'm happy to sign up for for four years and and um they were happy to take me on and uh so you came back the I, following year no like pretty much said, straight away, straight away. Yeah. give me the fucking yeah. upgrade yeah <laughs> i was like no nah, 
I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm not doing that. Uh, you know, sign us up full full time. Uh, you know, four years. So grab some chips and put them on the table and said, "Let's play." <laughs> yeah, Let's that's go. it. No. I I don't know much about that, mate. Like I haven't sort of looked deeply into your story, of course, but. I dare say that there's not many genius moves coming from recruitment. <laughs> I reckon it was a <laughs> roll the dice and you went, yeah. go get fucked, I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to all those people who are recruiting right yeah. now. Yeah. You're doing such a good job. <laughs> Jump on the Missouri Digger page. It's, it's got all the stats there. <laughs> Kill it. Sorry, man. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, so then, um, yeah, it was it was a good move on their end and yeah, ended up uh, with a four-year Rosso and um, – yeah, I, I got my letter of offer when I was at schoolies back in 2008. Oof. Yeah, I still Oof. remember. Like, yeah, my parents was you know had the Islander down here on the Gold Coast having a good time, and uh, my parents got the letter and opened it up for me, and uh, I joined on Australia Day 2009. You're so in. yeah, it was a good patriotic day to to join, and uh, you know off I went and started. Where my were you then, Luke? 2009. Australia Day 2009. Uh, Question without warning. Uh, I would have been. I know where I was. I was in the Mary Patch at a party in Canberra. Yeah, at at uh, it done true. Well, there you go. Oh, I wasn't. I was posted to to army headquarters. Yeah, I reckon I might I have was, been at that party actually. I was. Yeah, well, I probably <laughs> couldn't have seen you. I couldn't see you past my nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just deployed to the mayor for the second time, so yeah, I was over there as the S five the SOTG. Yeah. So everyone, yeah. It's not like a, where were you at this point of time, but like, yeah. <laughs> it's I, not the Twin it Towers, a, It mate. was one of those other bloody New Year's days that I missed out on. Yeah. So one of yeah, those yeah. things. Well, you know, you said Australia Day. Yeah. Australia I was Day. still there then yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whole time. So when you, when you make pivoted, like you're right, all right, let's say we're, we're going to Kapuka, was there anything you kind of prepared yourself to go? Or were you pretty fit, pretty, you know, keen as you said you were? Was there anything specific? And then what was the first moment where you realised, where you're like, fuck, I'm actually in the army. This is real. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's day one, right? When you're lining up and you're like, "What? What's going on?" But it all just hits you, and you're like, Shit, "Is this the right decision?" Yeah. Know, you know. But um, yeah, no. In terms of preparation, uh, my brother was already, you know, looking. My older brother was already looking at going down a similar path. Yep. So, kind of, we just, you know, combined forces and together, and you know, Gold. yeah, we we'll, uh, started training up and. Yeah, just trying to be as physically fit as possible. I mean, running, I think it's all about that endurance yep. fitness definitely for, for basic training and IETs and uh, just try to do as much running, push-ups, sit-ups, you know, just the basics. Yeah, uh, it know, takes that target off the back. Yeah, it takes exactly. the target off your yeah. back. If you I mean, like the objective is to be a grey man, obviously, yeah. and, yep. you know, you just you don't want to be the fastest, but you don't want to be the slowest yeah. either. So, um, yeah, that's what I tried to do. So that's, awesome. That was me my whole career. Yeah. Just, just, <laughs> just got through everything. Good, I'm good, good enough for me. Buy a bees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what about your first couple of years in service? What was that like? Because did you get in and it was sort of timed it reasonably well by coincidence that there were some gigs going on? Yeah, I did. Um, you know, it was th- – that's why, you know, everyone – when we're at IETs, everyone wanted to go to particular units because they know they, they were coming up on the deployment cycle. So, you know, um, there wasn't many spots to 6RR where I, where I ended up, but um, I was lucky enough uh, to, to get a spot into 6RR. And then, you know, we were next on the on the deployment cycle and, and I deployed to uh, on Mentoring Task Force 1 in, in 2010. So what was that like? And quick shout out to all the uh, legends that work at 6RR as well. Yeah. Awesome unit. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose that was an extra motivation as well because of the history of, of 6RR yep. and yeah, the Battle Delta of Company. Yep. And yeah, Delta Company, that was my first company. And awesome. And yeah, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. We got bloody royalty in the hey. room, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> that was my company at uh, Duntrue, not yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice. So. Don't, don't jump on that there, <laughs> mate. Yeah, yeah. He was, he's actually in a soldier, the proper I was, one. I was a pogue, just uh, typing emails and signing No, he's in the actual bloody company. <laughs> You're just in a company named after them. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Yeah, no, you're right, yeah. And then I suppose... He's like, are we still recording? (laughs) Yes, we are. Is this on? (laughs) No, I suppose, you know, when I was in IETs, uh, you know, a bit of... uh, I suppose the story for me, you know, in terms of a a worry from from my training was actually um, the military self-defence course. You know, so I was really lucky to... um, So I started training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu when I was probably like 15 years old. Yeah, awesome. So I had a little bit of experience, you know, I was still a a white belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, still very beginner, but... Um, you know, I had a little bit of experience in, in arm, unarmed combat. Snatching or, you know, just Yeah, exactly. So when it came to the MSD course, you know, everyone was trying to, you know, get ahead, I suppose, so they, they could get to the posting that they, they, they wanted, you know, but obviously there's 30 other blokes that want the same spot. Yep. So, um, you know, 
it was the military self defense course was the opportunity for me to shine, yep. I suppose, and maybe make myself known to the uh, take out a know, bit of competition. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it was funny because the our, our, our platoon commander was actually in the course and good on him. He was game. He said, you know, set up a circle, ring a death kind of thing, and he was like, who who wants to who wants to roll? You know, and I was like. I'll give, I'll it, give a go. it a win. Yeah. <laughs> and I just remember, you know, just choking him out, armbar yeah. him a bunch of times. Just turn him into a pretzel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, He's you like, know, this fucking dude's picked <laughs> yeah. up these moves Holy quickly. Yeah. Quick learner. Yeah. Delta Company 6 RM. Yeah. So I was, there was only three spots to six, and, you know, a uh, fair few people wanted to go there, and I was. Just lucky that I, you know, got got to the spot where I wanted, and you know, got under deployment. That is a good yeah, basic training. That is, that is yeah. a good one. You got to choke out the platoon commander. Yeah. <laughs> that was enjoyable as <laughs> Most well. Most people oh, yeah. would have wanted to choke out their platoon <laughs> commander or corporal, mate. You actually got to do it. How good's yeah. that? It's yeah. better than the coldest Canberra winter <laughs> ever. <laughs> Go back and listen to that one. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> me. I should have been a dental officer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing wrong with dental either, by the way. Awesome. Man. What yeah. was life like on the unit then? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. You know, I mean, I was in Delta, you know, 6 R originally, but, you know, we did a quick shakeout, you know, of the, yep. you know, operational um, unit and, and got the, the manning sorted. And, um, you know, it was touch and go whether I was actually going to deploy, you know, when I first got to the unit. Yep. Always uh, is. Yeah, exactly. But then I managed to get on a Rockle platoon trip. So I did a, you know, shortened version yep. of, of six months. And, um, you know, I was just stoked to get on, you know. Yeah. And, um, yep. yeah, it was definitely... Yeah, it was a great experience. It was a bit daunting, you know, being a Rockle platoon because you're coming in, you know, to a unit, uh, you know, that's already well established yep. and, and everything like that. But, you know, just put my head down and did the work and, yeah. Yep, choked a few blokes out. <laughs> that's it. Hey, yeah. Good on you, man. Yeah. But no, I had a great, <laughs> fantastic experience in the unit. Like, 6 Hour was a fantastic unit. Um, the deployment was, you know, a full-on experience. You know, we had a, a lot of casualties during that time yeah, and, you know, guys that paid the ultimate sacrifice. Yep. So, um, but... It was, you know, every every soldier kind of prays for war kind of situation. You know, everyone wants to get the run on jersey yep. and, and, you know, test themselves and, and yeah, get over there and get Anything into it. Anything you can pass on that um, – what did you do to maintain your st- you know, your composure and everything over there when you got chaos running around? Yeah, I mean, having self-awareness, you know, um, I think is super important. Um, you know, just being aware of your emotions and, and you know, obviously leaning on, on your mates while yeah. you're over there. Um, you know, obviously the bonds you form are, you know, second to none, um, you know, and, and you're know, leaning on your team. And that's something that I've obviously taken with me and I'm sure everyone in this room can, you know, resonate with that. And, and um, yeah, I think that's super important, so... Yeah. It's really funny that you say that, <clears throat> like regardless, and I'm, I'm not making a joke about recruiting now, but regardless of, of where we're targeting and who, who the recruiting, you know, sort of is after at the moment, historically speaking, it's been young blokes, right, that, that go through. And I, I just identified the fact that you said self-awareness and being self-aware in, in combat is, is one of the biggest tools that got you through that or allowed you to sort of navigate that. Though that group of humans is probably the least self-aware group of humans on the face of the earth, a young bloke, because you're full of testosterone and you stuff everything down and you shove it down into your guts and you just fucking carry on, right? Mm. So it's, it's really good that you guys are doing what you're doing and we'll get to it in a minute to sort of give people the opportunity to, to be more self-aware, to get an understanding of the things that they've gone through and the traumas and, and you know, what they've carried themselves through because you know, you can't, you, you're okay until you're not. Yeah. Any other military highlights before you sort of start talking about your transition? Um, how, no. many, how many years you ended up doing in the end? Uh, about five and a half years, yeah. yeah. Yep. I mean, the highlights was, was definitely, you know, that deployment to Afghanistan and then... Being uh, in mortars? Yeah, I was in mortars. Uh, I tried to stay as much time in support company as possible, trying to bludge over in support and, uh, you know, just... <laughs> I was about to say, what was the driver behind that? You go, yeah, bludgeon. <laughs> no, not really. Is were it? you yeah. all like carry, yeah. carrying heavy shit or you're resting? <laughs> yeah. That's it. No, it's just, I suppose, I just wanted to work with the most specialised uh, people as possible. You yep. know, I found that, you know... The the more specialised it was, the the smaller the group generally was, and yep. maybe the higher the level of, of skill set. soldiering and yeah. skill set there was. So, um, you know, I wanted to get across to mortars, and, and that's what I did uh, after the deployment. Uh, and then I was really lucky to then go back to the rifle company, and then um, you know get recommended to do the the recon course and pick that up and and finish up my career in in, in recon. So awesome. awesome, yeah. What was the thing that um, actually? Let's press pause there. Yep. Come back to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we're going to get to your point as well. I was like, right, when did you get out? And then we'll, we'll come back, Brody. See, you. mate, well said. I love that story. <clears throat> Where'd you grow up, mate? What did you decide to join the military? And this, 
this bloke's got a presence about him, ladies and gents. If you're not, if you're not, if you're just listening to this in the car. Go watch the where it is, where it is you watch stuff for, and you'll you get a real understanding. I think I'm going to love this next fifteen or twenty minutes. Awesome, thanks, Jensen. Thanks for the awesome introduction, Luke. And um, you know, it's just the truth. Straight mate. back at you. Great blokes. Uh, you know, connect quite nicely. Yeah. So, um, for me, I I grew up in southeast Melbourne. Um, big AFL fan. So. Um, I've struggled for 20 years barracking for the Essendon Bombers. <laughs> oh, me too. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Here we go. That is not scripted. <laughs> that is not scripted. And now I said we we're going to connect yeah. and that's... Here comes a shit love in. We're, four, <laughs> we're 14 seconds in. And oh, mate, I love it. <laughs> I was there, mate, when they beat the Pies on Friday night. Yes, mate, you were there oh, when nice. the Bombers started. <laughs> <laughs> This is my fucking podcast, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. But, um, yeah, things are looking up for the Bombers this year. Indeed. So. Indeed. But, um, yeah, look, grew up uh, playing a lot of uh, uh, team sports uh, and I did a lot of jobs after school and, and that's exactly what they were, jobs. And I was looking for something, I guess, a little bit more of a career and, I, and, and the Army really appealed to me, um, especially, you know, the, the, the appeal of mateship, getting in mm. as a team uh, and, and working together and that's something that I really enjoyed. So... I joined up in 2008 and uh, joined the Corps of Transport, uh, so the Pogue Corps. Stand, Stand fast. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't scripted either. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and um, look, I, I think I had a, a – one thing I really liked about the Corps of Transport is being able to post to different units and see what different corps uh, – and work with different corps. That was something that I really enjoyed. And I'm you know, working with the SIGs, working with Intel um, and, and you know, always putting my hand up to – I guess help out and learn more about what other courses do as well. It helps me with my job. So, well, um, what was your basic training like? Is that what you're about to no, say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basic training. Yeah, um, I, I really enjoyed it. To be honest, um, I, I enjoyed. I guess the sense of urgency um, it formed some really good friendships. Uh, some of which I still keep in contact with today. Um, and and I think it, it helped set. I guess a lot of the foundations of I guess who I am today. So. Um, you know, it's one thing you never forget what it was like at basic yeah, training. Never, I've, I have no doubt it's really laid, laid the foundations for who you are. Yeah, I remember how cold it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true too, <laughs> mate. One of the th we'll get there. One of the things I remember about you is exactly what you just said in the unit, mate. Was like always putting your hand up. And I, th other than being a real good bloke, I think that was one of the things I found most endearing about you. Like, obviously, there's a bunch of corporals and sergeants and stuff running around everywhere, and we weren't even in the same the same troop. But I just remember you having your fingers in every pie and being willing to throw your hand up when, even when things were a little bit tough. It was fucking awesome, mate. It was great. Yeah. If you're listening as a corporal out there, be that, be that human, um, and just get the job done. What you happened know? then? Yeah. Uh, so I I deployed uh, on a um, FSU nine yep. um, over to Afghanistan, and we did some. I was working with a one star over there and and moving around um, uh, Kabul, and it was really really exciting sort of stuff because uh, I guess I had a team and a lot of responsibility fell on my shoulders to make sure that the decisions I were making were accurate and yep. we were doing things properly. Otherwise, people you know could potentially. Fall, fall victim to my my wrong decision. So uh, it was really good for me. It helped me mature as a, as a young bloke to yep. really um, think about what I was doing, um, think about the actions I was taking, and, and really apply um, you know, the right decisions and, and think things through. So C command is is one of the most challenging things. It's also one of the re most rewarding. It's mm. like having kids. Um, <laughs> it's it's one of the most challenging because it is you know like the defence force is one of those job spaces where the decisions you make can mean life and death yep. for people. Um, so, mate, I'm glad you thrived in that environment and it's just a lesson that you've taken away. Yeah. Which, yeah. which units did you serve in then? So I know you are at 85 with this bullfed. <laughs> uh, so I was at the old 1396 Squadron, which is now 7 CSR. Uh, I was at 1 Int Battalion. Uh, I did um, 9 FSB. I did some time in CISB. Uh, and then I finished uh, my time up in ADFA as a divisional sergeant. So, oh, What was that like going back and being surrounded by... As I said to you before, I did some time down at um, Kapuga as an RI, and we were basically there RI-ish for the, for the young cadets yeah, going through. Yeah, pretty much. So as soon as I got there, I got given the first year um, cadets, um, and, and I absolutely loved it. Um, watching some of these people, um, you know, 17 years old, never used mm. a washing machine or a dryer before, and 
um, watching them march out, um, you know, a few years later out of Duntroon and so forth, just watching them grow. And I still keep in contact with them today. They're out there in the field on, right now. And yep. Me too. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of my cadets at Duntroon. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Um, sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. Mick, everything, yeah. he, everything I fuck up is his fault. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I thoroughly, I, I would say it's probably, you know, finishing up at ADFA um, and doing that job was probably one of my, one of my highlights. Yeah. Uh, I learned so much uh, and yeah, it's just awesome to see them where they are today. Getting yeah. an opportunity to shape the future minds, leaders, commanders of the military is, is actually a huge responsibility, mm. man. Like, you know, people can go down there and fob it off or they can take it really fucking seriously and the end product will be a result of the, the effort that you and they put into that. So. Mm. Awesome, right? I just come off SOTG one, and the MTF <laughs> concept wasn't you know quite spawned. Then I'm like, well, you know, those of you that that um, end up going to SOCOM, you're probably going to end up over in the, you know the Mio pretty quickly. For those that don't, it's probably coming your way soon. And of course, you know, two, three, four, five years down the track, you get to catch up with people afterwards. They're like, I didn't think it was at time, sir, but like you were right. I deployed nine months after I bloody did my ROBC, for instance. Mm. I'm like, yeah, I yeah. fucking told you. And I'm, I, <laughs> I, I hope you were listening to some of the things I was I hope, speaking about. I hope your pouches were done up. <laughs> <laughs> hope you, what was it? Had you got well, your, yeah. your, your boots, your boots <laughs> bloody done up at the LD yeah. or something like that. Um, not bloody left in the, in the sleeping bag. <laughs> you had an interesting... Um, your transition wasn't exactly as you would have planned it to be, though. Because, yeah. you know, what I'm hearing right now is that you were committed and you loved your job and you loved, you know, the, uh, the overall contribution and influence you were having on people. But then you exited stage right reasonably quickly. Yeah, I did. That's right. So um, I had, a, I had, think I had a great career. And, 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 you know, like I say, it's the foundations of who I am today. But I wanted to keep that going. But I feel like there was, it was probably a little bit too difficult Um to, I wanted to, I guess, go across to be an officer and continue my career. I didn't want to go back to driving uh, trucks or being part of a truck troop or anything like that. But I guess the process back then was probably a little bit too hard. Um, so I saw other opportunities uh, in, in Canberra, um, in, in federal government, and that's that's where I, uh, I was studying at the time and I was studying project management. And I was saying to Brody earlier, I feel there's a lot in Army uh, that you learn that you can apply to project management. Mm. So... Um, I felt that was a natural fit for me and, and that worked well in, in Canberra. What was the actual um, separation like though? Did you did they have a little farewell for you? You know, what was when you woke up the next morning and you're not wearing a uniform anymore? Like, just take us on that journey because everyone listening right now who wears a uniform, this is going to be you one day. Yeah, look, it, it was definitely a bit of a shock to the system. Um, I feel um, getting out into the civilian world, uh, it's just, it's very different. I feel when, when you're in the uniform and you're with your mates, I feel people have generally got your back. Uh, you know, you can sort of look left, look right. Pe- you know, people are on, on the same level and, and, and on the same mindset. Um, whereas once you're out, I felt that, yeah, you, 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 there was a lot to learn. That's for sure. Um, mm. not, not everyone's your friend. Um, yeah. What helped you? What, what were the things that kind of... You know, put the you know put the structure in your life. What were the things that kind of gave you the the, the sense of hope and yeah. you know? Look, I, I guess I've always been a person that's just wanted to help other people. I think that's sort of what my purpose has been, and and, and I feel that um, you know I, I found a, a couple of roles in in government where I th- we were, we were helping uh, other people, and uh, especially in the job space. So veterans struggle uh, with employment. Um, you know, we don't have resumes that, that look really sexy to, to employers out there or they don't understand it. Or, you know, in Brody's case, he probably had one, one interview at 17. It's, it's a long time before you get your next interview. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, I was helping people get, get jobs and, 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 yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, lovely. Um, Brody, let's go back to you then because yeah, yeah. we sort of stopped at that point. He's like, hey, don't forget about my transition. <laughs> no, no, like, I can, can go for it. I'm, I'm out as well. <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't want to interrupt your flow, so no, that, was, that, was, that was really, yeah, really good. You. So, yeah, tell us about when did, the, when did the internal balloon go up for you that like, all right, I think I'm going to you know exit the military now? Yeah, I think once I saw that maybe – it wasn't for me forever, you know, that I was like, okay, I need to pivot to something else and, and find new purpose in my life and yeah. new direction. Um, so initially when I was looking to transition, I was thinking about the police force and I actually applied for the police force. But yep. then I kind of dove a bit deeper and, and um, I was actually 
a combat first aider, you know, as an additional skill set, and and um, that's what really drew my attention to doing something in the in the medical space because mm-hmm. uh, I really enjoyed that role. I was, uh, you know, I was that CFA when I was in Afghanistan, and and I really thrived on on being that, uh, awesome. you know, in in my section and uh, platoon. So, yeah, I, I was kind of figuring out, okay, I want to go to university. I think that, you know, I, I felt like police maybe was switching one uniform for another. Yep. Uh, nothing against people that end up in the police. I think it's fantastic um, career choice. But, yeah, I, I think I was really um, ready to go to university and, and go down that path. Um, so I was kind of tossing up whether it's, you know, paramedics, nursing or medicine. And um, I, I landed on, on nursing because I, I thought that was, um, you know, a really fantastic career path where I could – help people um and also you know maybe there was a bit more diversity in roles you know it's a bit easier to transition from one area of healthcare to another as a registered nurse yep. uh, than you know maybe it is uh you know as a paramedic or what, or what year was this mate and how old were you at that point in time? yeah so it was 2014 so i would have been 23 or 24 years old um so you know I'm glad I made that decision, you know, the sooner the better, I think, yeah. you know, once and then kind of create, you definitely don't rush it, create a plan and then, and then go for it, you know, all in. So I love the fact that you said create a plan, mate, because as we had a chat at lunch, the people that don't have a plan when they're transitioning and, you know, the people that, that jump out and turn around and go, fuck that, the, the, the big green machine or blue or, you know, machine behind them and they get bitter and they get upset and they get cranky and they don't have that plan that they're working towards. They're the ones that I've seen in my experiences and you guys can probably, you know, feed into this as well. They're the ones that struggle the most. Not, not saying we all don't struggle with things, but it's one of the things. I love the fact that you said you planned towards something, not ran away from something. Mm. Yeah. I love the fact that you're like, I'm now willing to go back into the university <laughs> world and invest four years of my life. Some would say you're going sideways or maybe backwards. Mm. That's what investing is sometimes, yeah. right? If you well, go, if you go, if you're you, investing in me. Well, I had to train you. <laughs> so that was fucking, that was 18 months of my life I didn't get back. <laughs> On top of what I did at Duntroon. So if that's like three and a half years of my life, I'm still owed by, owed by you. When do the dividends come in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, sorry, you know, even if you're buying a property, you come with $100,000, you part with that 100 grand for the first initial deposit and cost. So some would say you go backwards a little bit then, but you're not, you're investing. So spending and investing are two different things, but you're now going, all right, if I now need to be a registered nurse, you don't do a six week course for that. You do three or four years at, u- at uni. Yeah. So good on you. Like let's talk about, right. Focus on creating the new version of you that doesn't wear the military uniform anymore. You yeah. don't put a nurse, nurse's uniform on. Yeah. And, I think I was I was ready to learn, you know, yeah. as like I, you know, when I was in school, like you know, to be honest, like school was more social and sporting for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I actually failed year twelve, yep. you know, and and I just you know I didn't thrive uh, in that learning environment at that point in time. But then at when I was you know discharging. I was in a point where I was like, I actually really enjoy learning. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to learn. Your frontal you know? cortex has developed. Yeah, exactly. Isn't it funny? When you're interested in something and you want to learn about it, you find time. Yeah, man. People yeah. Like, people, we, every now and then we're like, hey, this client hasn't got back to us for ages. And I'm like, you know what? It's just not a priority for them. Yep. It's, you're always too busy to do something until it becomes a priority mm. or and or you're interested in it. So if it's a priority and you're interested in it, you fucking wake up make earlier time. and you make time to get it done. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So good on you, man. Yeah, yeah. What was the, what was the, where did you go to uni? Uh, I actually started up at uh, Charles Darwin University. Mm-hmm. So I moved to Darwin, uh, lived up there for a bit. And, and then, what was the background about that? Yeah, what? Uh, it was actually just an ex-girlfriend, you know. I moved up there. Uh, she, she was in the army and, um, you know, moved up to Darwin when I got out. And, and you know, I, just, I wanted to change things up a bit. Yep. You know, I was actually from Brisbane originally. I missed that part in the, in the you know, in the intro and in my story. But I was from Brisbane originally and then posted back to Brisbane. So my whole life had been in Brisbane. Yep. You know, so I was definitely ready. Uh, you know, I was going through a big change in, in, you know, discharge, but I was also just, you know, I knew I needed to shake things up a bit. So you just fucking changed everything. I just went everything. Full, 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 <laughs> at the same full time. noise, yeah, at the same exact full noise. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, went full noise and and ended up in Darwin, and um, yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, I, I I loved my time up there. I love Darwin. I love I love you know. I think everywhere in Australia is 
pretty epic, you know, to be honest, like in the grand scheme of things. So um, I've, I've lived around a fair bit Did since. Did you finish your degree up there? I'll get a no, sense. Yeah. No, yeah. I moved back to Brizzy um, and uh, then I, I finished my degree at uh, QT. So, right, so some of the um, RPO you got from Darwin was able to be yeah, interchanged? Exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, good. yeah, it took me four years to do my, uh, finish up my, my bachelor's yep. and, um, yeah, finished it up and then um, I was... Yeah, do you want me to talk a bit more about transition? Or, yeah, you know, that's, that's, yeah, that's what we're here for. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so um, you know, for me, you know, having that clear plan, you know, like I said, and and finding that new purpose was what helped me with with my transition. I mean, obviously, a huge huge part of yourself gets you know ripped out. You know, that's what it feels like when yep. you when you leave defence, you lose your whole you know that group identity, which is more powerful than your individual identity. I. Every bloke sitting at this table is just nodding right now if you can't see. <laughs> when you're explaining this, mate, we're all going, fucking yep. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. I mean, the green machine, you know, yeah. and, and ADF, that, that's more that's bigger than your individual identity when you're in. Uh, and that comes first. And, you know, when you get out, you've really got to understand and go on this journey of self-discovery of who, who am I and what is my new purpose and, and direction in life. Yep. Um, so for me, uh, you know, having that plan and, and that, that study path and that career path was gave me new identity and new purpose. Um, so that really helped. Um, I also think, um, you know, I, I found a new community in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You know, like I said, it's something that I've, I've done and I'm passionate about and I've trained for a long time. And, um, you know, it's such a tight-knit community in, in Jiu-Jitsu. I mean, you're doing something that's good for your body, your mind. Um, you know, you're forming new relationships. And, and so, you know, I found that helped a lot as well. Just don't choke out the senior nurse in the other <laughs> hospital. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> You like, you, do, you like the UFC? Yeah, I love, that's what got me into jiu-jitsu you know, back in the day. So. Oh, now they're doing a fucking <laughs> yeah, fist back. Yeah, hey. yeah. I'll tell you Keep what, you know what the real fist pump is, though? <laughs> What's that? It's this rooster's 40th birthday soon, and I'm taking him to the UFC. Oh, right? oh, oh superb. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. 305, mate. Oh, yeah. 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 Tickets oh how good. Yeah. 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 I'm going to make him pay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the a, bar. There's a dividend for you. So you're... you're um. What's what's the nursing community like? Because you've um, got your BJJ on the side there, it's keeping you fit, keeping you active, boom, boom, boom. But like when you, you go to, and you go to work, right, and then you're a, you're an RN somewhere. Yeah. Was there any similarities from the military? Because there's a bit of a rank structure with that as well, right? Yeah, and they definitely. They wear your same yeah. uniform, etc. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think there is. Um, you know, I was drawn towards um, you know critical care areas. Yeah. You know, I wanted. Uh, you know, just naturally to go towards those areas. Um, you know, it's more, I suppose, more specialised in a way. So I, you know, started in paediatrics actually because I had, again, a plan of where I wanted to end up in, in my nursing career. Mm -hmm. um, so that gave me a lot of good experience to then uh, move to, you know, the emergency department because when you're in emergency, you see both kids and adults. Yep. Um, so, and a lot of the time, if people haven't had that exposure to kids uh, and babies, you know, as soon as... They've got one in front of them. They're Very like, confronting. Wow, yeah. this oh, is, mate, you can this have is, that. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I was really grateful to have that experience in paediatrics before m m making a shift into into the emergency department. And, yeah, definitely in those, especially in those critical care areas, um, you know, teamwork's absolutely essential. And, mm. you know, you, you definitely, um, you know, have a lot of com camaraderie in the team and, you know, there's a lot of reliant on each other and yeah. really high stress. This is a loaded question, but how did you guys deal with your individual mental health when you first transitioned? And did you need any, if you'd be willing to share or not, any professional help to help you you know, find a new purpose or, or deal with things that you've, you've both deployed in high research circumstances, no doubt been exposed to things that probably come up at unwanted times. But how did you guys find the overall healthcare system and stuff when you first got out? Back to you, Mick, maybe? Yeah, look, um, I think the overall healthcare system, again, was a learning journey for me. Um, I didn't I didn't even know how to apply mm. for a, a Medicare, Medicare card. card. Yeah, yep. I had no idea. Um, and... I think I think just leveraging people around me um, and and um, again I, I agree with the whole the plan theme is is I had a plan and then that's what I wanted to focus towards so um, you know the, uh, the support network around you you can't underestimate that whatsoever and you know there's nothing wrong with reaching out for help uh, with your mates uh, with your family um, and you're much better doing that as early as possible uh, and that that's what I did yeah good, good on you man because it's yeah. 
it's not an easy thing to do mm. to be a proud kind of individual that's you know thrown yourself in adversity and gone through a career and stuff. Um, and it took me a long while, and I know it took you a long while to actually put your hand up and say, "I need a hand, I need mm. help." Um, so good on you for doing that early, mate, and identifying yep. that. Because well, it's pretty normal. What happens, right, when you hand your ID card back in, like you're now on the other side of the fence. You're yeah, not yep. part of that group no. anymore. So I guess what we were talking about at lunch, like establishing it, because if you go home to Cowra, for instance, to use a really extreme example. <laughs> <laughs> where Luke's from, oh, like shout out to Cara. You, you know, you you posted the six RER and you're yeah. back at you're back at the you know awesome bloody home base in Cowra. You you ain't seeing anyone you're anytime away. soon. No. You're, you're a real world, world away, away from anywhere. You can so establish you. your Facebook groups or your WhatsApp groups or yep. whatever it is. Like you can just be included still because as soon as you're as soon as you're out of the DRN or the DSN, you are out of the link on everything. Yep. So you know it's, you know the sooner you can put a like the, so there's a mechanical plan about what you're going to do, but then there's a dynamics plan as well about how can I keep in touch with those that have been my inner circle. Yeah, yep. I think not everyone has the op- opportunity to do this, but also you know mm. um, you know if you can be involved in the reserves, you know I know yep. obviously some people are medically discharged and they don't have that option, yep. but if you do have that option, I think that's a great soft exit as well. Yep. you know mm. it's is to still keep your keep dabbling in that space and and you know a lot of people end up at the reserve units that you, you might have served with or you know yep. cross paths with so you can still maybe keep some of those relationships as well and i did that you know i, I was in north force for a bit and then nine rqr um and, and it was great to um, still be involved in in defense in the communities like i said not everyone has that option but yep. you know that could be a great option as well for some people you probably just did more for the army reserves than the army reserves have done mate in the last, <laughs> in the last 24 months <laughs> <laughs> So let's use the next 20, 25 minutes or so again. How did you guys meet? How did you guys form? you got your MediLink shirt here at the moment. I know that you obviously have had a huge role in that. I don't actually know the answer to this, so I wanted to, and I wanted to hear it for the first time. I wanted to get to know you guys as individuals and what your transition story was, and yep. I think we're like there now. Take us, again, who wants to go first? Yeah. Take us on I the journey. Yeah, go, you yeah. go first, yeah. and then I'll tell you how I got involved. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know... I realised that psych- psychiatric services was a, was a huge issue in the space. Um, you know, there's only about five thousand psychiatrists in Australia. Obviously, there's no shortage of work out there for them. So, um, you know, there's unfortunately not enough psychiatrists assisting you know the veteran community. Yeah. Um, you know, it also requires a lot of you know extra level of understanding of you know what. ADF members experience in service and how that can, you know, obviously lead to the occupational hazards that, you know, um, they can be exposed to and and the the mental health injuries that can arise from that exposure. So, um, you know, I wanted to do something about that and and that's, you know, where Medilinks was was born back in the start of 2022. So co-founded Medilinks and, and, um, you know, our mission was, you know, just to try and provide that, that speed and ease of access to, you know, high quality psychiatric services. So um, at the moment we, we only provide psychiatric assessment services, but um, you know, it's, it's an integral and really important piece uh, when, when a veteran submits a mental health compensation claim with the Department of Veteran Affairs. Um, they might be seeing a psychologist, but they actually need uh, to see a psychiatrist and they need evidence from a psychiatrist so their, their claim can be uh, assessed. Yep. Um, liability can be accepted for, for injuries that may have been caused during their service and then um, they can then, you know, go on the journey to rehabilitation and, and, and hopefully recovery and optimization, you know, um, from there. So how we met, uh, going back to that. So, you know, um, you know, we were just looking to bring on more talent into our team. So um, that matey thinks you're talented. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey? uh, how good's that? You know, so we put the call out there um, uh, for a COO and um, really, you know, Mick, uh, you know, resume came across my desk and, uh, you know, I jumped at the opportunity to, to get him on the team and, um, you know, just click straight away that uh, I think Mick really uh, exudes positive energy and, yeah. uh, you, know, he's po- you know, that's something we talk about all the time that we're positively charged. I think yep. it's super Love important it. to it. have that positive mindset and, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, is obviously a great addition to the team. Yeah. Optimus rule the world is my <laughs> saying. You know, I know you guys share the same thing. <laughs> Mick, so why don't you tell Brody how you came yeah, into this? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. um, as I mentioned, uh, I, I strategically positioned myself in Canberra. And I thought that was a good place to get out, um, and not just for me, but uh, employment for my wife as well. So she was very lucky to get a job in the public service there. 
Um, and then we uh, had our first child and then everything changed. <laughs> Absolutely everything. <Yep. laughs> we say to our yep. clients, don't we? Like, oh, we're thinking about having a child next year. I'm like, oof. Yeah, yeah this is going to change I, everything. One of the lines I use is that the – I don't look at him like this, but the banks see my son as a liability. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they do, they do. Um, so yeah, I, we we look. We made the decision to move back to Brisbane, and that's where where my wife uh, sort of grew up in the northern New South Wales area, and and and, and moved to having Brisbane. that family support with yeah. a young family is invaluable. Yeah. Hey, hundred percent. And um, you know, I think I learned a lot in Canberra. I think it's very different to, um, I guess, being boots on the ground out in the units uh, and. Um, when I was looking for jobs, I saw the Medilinks ad. It was actually for a general manager at the time. Um, and everything that was written on that job description, it just it appealed to me. Same. I was like, this is, this is me. And, you know, I think, you know, being having a lot of mates, um, serving with people, going through it myself, um, you know, with, with mental health uh, and, and seeing what Medilinks wanted, wanted to achieve, it, it, I, it was the job that I wanted to go for. And, I was very lucky to, to get a get an interview. Yeah. Well done for your HR department for crafting such an appealing job description. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Are you the really HR department? Yeah. <laughs> Wear all the hats. Yeah. All the hats early in an you know, organisation. Business so. owner, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we're really lucky to um, have a lot of veterans on our team as well. I think that's really integral yeah. to our service. You know, I... I Obviously, we're we're specialising in supporting the veteran yep. community at the moment, but um, you know, I definitely would like to expand that um, to you know, veterans' families and and um, you know other um, in need communities. You know, the emergency services and first responders. I know a lot of um, ADF members end up in that space, so um, we're very much open to uh, expanding and assisting more communities. So, how does it actually work? Just like I'm a veteran, I've got out. I've now worked out that I need some. Um, some psychiatrist support. What do I do? How do like yeah. when I'm looking at your website? I'm like, how do I read it and make it a no brainer to go? All right, these guys are going to expert. Are going to help me in some way, shape, or form, yeah. as opposed to me just bringing up a counselor by myself. Yeah. So I mean. The journey um, for one of our clients, um, usually, you know, they could still be in, in defence uh, or they could have, you know, separated uh, or they could be... That's a really important note. You yeah. don't need to be a veteran to use these services, yeah. right? No, because definitely. you can, you know, we're talking to a bunch of clients that have got yep. claims in, some about to be given gold card while still serving, yep. no less. Well, I actually that think... That doesn't quite make sense to me, but yeah. I'm not the policy maker. Yeah, I think the ideal scenario, obviously, is they're still serving. Yeah. Um, Even better. Be yeah. Because yeah. the earlier you engage, you know, when we talk about rehabilitation outcomes, um, the earlier you engage with someone, the better their likelihood of outcomes. Prehab, not rehab. Exactly. Mm. Yep. Yeah, and I think that's a lot that's going to come out of the Royal Commission is like, um, you know, not actually focusing on DVA, but focusing on defence yep. and being proactive and prevention is the best cure. And, um, yeah, proactive healthcare is, you know, extremely important. So, um, you know whilst they're still serving or, you know, have transitioned, they'll identify that, you know, maybe they might have something going on in terms of uh, their mental health, might be suffering a bit, uh, and submitting a compensation claim with the Department of Veteran Affairs is the first step. Um, so a lot of people, you know, might do this themselves through my service, through the uh, DVA portal, through, you go through MyGov, or they might engage, uh, you know, some an expert in the space. Um, there's lots of, uh, e you know, experts in, in the space. Paid and non-paid advocates. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah or, or a lawyer. You know, it's yeah. obviously, there's lots of people out there offering different services, do your research, yeah. uh, you know, um, often, you know, like Mick spoke about earlier, you know, the digging it and, re and relying on other people that have had good experiences yep. is, you know, maybe a, a good place to start. Um, and, um, you know, once that person submitted that claim by themselves or with the help of an advocate, they'll get a request um, for a psychiatric assessment. Um, that's when, you know, that, that the DVA will ask who, who is your psychiatrist and that's where, you know, you can put down Medilinks uh, and then either their representative or the veteran themselves can self-refer to, to Medilinks. So through our website, um, we have a portal there, a referral portal, um, or uh, we also, you know, we... You know, a big part of what we do is uh, forming partnerships with the veteran community, all those people that are helping. So we get out there in the community, um, you know, partner with organisations that are assisting veterans Love with it. the compensation uh, process uh, and, and then they can refer the veteran through to us. Yep. So, um, and have you got a bunch of psychiatrists that are linked in, many linked, <laughs> linked in with you guys, like on your books, to yeah, use a very, yeah, exactly. very yeah. loose phrase? Yeah. yeah, employed by many links, working with many links, like part of our team. Yeah. So, um, oh, right, know. not just 
not just on the books, actually inside the wire. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so yeah, better. yeah, I exactly. Like and then that obviously allows us to give them the, you know, the training context, and understanding and yeah. context. You know, um, you know, there's some fantastic training um, modules that the DVA provide uh, through a portal called DVA Train, or any healthcare provider can do yep. those modules that can help them. I suppose get a bit of extra understanding of what service like is like and, and what this pathway and uh, is like um, you know it is there's a lot of education that needs to go in there not just for the veteran but for the for the healthcare provider as well absolutely man yeah. like we, we touched on this quickly at lunch um, it's it's one it's ex an extremely important part to understand more about about service life and those challenges and difficulties and stuff but it's also just as important to understand how to navigate the DVA system yep. as a healthcare provider. Um, you know, I, I think it took me four, five, six visits with my psychiatrist just to go through the paperwork. So mm -hmm. not even through diagnoses, but going through the paperwork that was required to meet the standard of, of DVA. Like, I mean, you know, if you're in, in the room with a professional that understands that or, you know, someone that can put you in touch with a professional that understands that, it just expedites that, that process, you know, incredibly much, much, it makes it much easier. Sorry, I had to get there. I was very, yeah. very lucky that I found a guy who, um, Serbian or Bosnian, anyway, grew up in that environment where he yeah. knew what it's like to have PTSD and, you know, be operating in, in, in dangerous environments. And I was able to connect with him really, really well. Awesome. I couldn't imagine meeting someone who doesn't have the full and proper comprehensive military context. Joined as a 17, 17 year old, got out when I was 41 and saw enough shit that I need to talk to someone. I'm so glad that there's an organisation like yours that does exist mm. where you've got professional psychiatrists that get it. Mm. They don't care. I don't care whether they've been to war themselves, but as long as they get the un and they're able to provide that inputs to be able to um, enable the healing and the um, rectification process to occur. It's not the right word, but you know you're gonna you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, you're good on you, fellas. Mm. It's a bloody great idea. It's yeah. yeah. Well, we like Mick. I know you, when you really got your teeth sunk into. You know the nuts and bolts of the business, as opposed to just reading the job description. How how have you loved it so far? Yeah, look, it's um it's been an awesome journey, and you know something I can say about Brody is he's got fantastic vision, uh, and and I feel like uh, Medilinks is only just getting started, and we've we've helped a ridiculous amount of veterans with awesome. their first step to their re rehabilitation, and uh, it's really rewarding. It really is, and. Um, I would say that we're extremely agile because things are always changing. So we're having to adapt to, you know, whether something's changing at a government level or, you know, DVA's thrown a spanner in the works or, you know, um, you never, every veteran's got a different story or, or, or different experience. So we're, we're always having to adapt and change. And as, as part of my role in operations is making sure that we're keeping up with that change and keeping that energy. And um, something that Brody really talks about is, is the day one mentality. So we're coming in, it's day one. We're excited. We want to. We want to learn. We want to help. And and yeah, I'm really excited to see where MediLinks is going to go. It's come such a long way. So I'm, I wish that I knew that MediLinks was there yeah, when I transitioned. Me too. Like just even if it's we, you know, we talked about that fatigue of telling your story, and and you know, you guys sort of, you know, said let's let's wrap, you know, you guys wrap this up in a way that that sort of reduces that requirement for somebody to go through, go to a podiatrist, tell your story, go to a dentist, tell your story, go to a psychiatrist. You've got bruxism. How come that? Why is that? Yeah. Oh, no. Here how we long, go. How long Strap you got? in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about ways that you guys navigate that as well. Yeah, definitely. I th I think uh, you know a really detailed assessment is is critically important to you know maybe reducing. The the chances of having to retell that story um you know you can you know get the the report that is you know really holistic and covers you know a huge amount of your your life and and then you can get that report uh you can request it from from the department and then you can take that with you yep. to other healthcare providers that you might come across during your journey uh and then they can have a really good understanding of your your overall health and well-being uh, and what you've been through um, and, and that might be an opportunity that you might reduce the chances of having to, to, to retell that story. Yeah, because so. it, is, it is a very, very tight, it can be, sorry, it, for, for whoever's out there, you know, going through the journey, can be very, very tiring. So putting those measures in place early, not just a document to, you know, serve the DVA requirements, but a, a document that's actually going to service you going through getting rehabilitation, yeah. getting help, getting support. It's not just about ticking the box so you get some coin. Like that's yeah, well that, the that's fucking the thing. side project, right? Yeah, exactly. Like a, a huge part of, of, you know, my passion is that a lot of the time the rehabilitation gets lost yes. from the rehabilitation and compensation yep. legislation. You yep. know, there's obviously three 
acts that you know claims are submitted under and often people are obviously focusing on the compensation which is for some people obviously it's an entitlement and is incredibly important and can change people's lives but i mean more importantly is is that actual rehabilitation and in my opinion and that should be the the primary focus because he's like i'm on a bunch of dva forums and everything on on the social media platforms and when someone's like oh i'll just you know have my stuff come back and i've got you know not not as many points as what i needed First thing, two things that spring to my mind, I'm like, this poor bastard's now going to have to go through and redress it all. And like, you know, but I'm, then the next thing I'm like, I better use the service provider along the way that wasn't fully switched on mm. to a couple of adjectives and verbs and phrases mm. that DV, that will resonate with DVA. Like you've got to please find a service provider and, you know, be that at the psychiatrist level. And I know you guys are going to branch out into other areas of healthcare, but yeah, don't... Don't settle for just going. So I dropped my GP when I found the DVA specialist guy. Yeah, I'm like, all right, my, like, my GP's like, no, no, I'll be, I can fill out the forms of DVA for you. I'm like, I know you can, bro, but I need him filled out to the fucking nth degree, to the yeah. elite level, because that's yep. you know my my livelihood and my ongoing health and my seventy year old self needs it to be that way. Yep. So yeah, you know if you yeah, if you find yourself in that position, ladies and gents, then um, you know. We're, pr- we're going to do a podcast with someone soon, actually, who's been our DVA doctor. I yep. spoke with him recently. I said, we're fucking doing a podcast, and he'd love to come and do it. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, I think, um, well, I think I the think overall community and the willingness to have the right support on your team is there. But, yeah, don't stop, I suppose, until you find the right people is my message. Yeah, definitely. And, like, you, you're G, your GP that you were seeing still serves a purpose for you. Indeed. But it's about finding the right person for the right job, you know. Yep. And, and, you know, obviously that's – challenging for some people to to understand who the right person to see is especially there is a lot of mixed in you know messages and information out there and and um you know also this is a quite a complex <laughs> system to navigate you know and and you know there's no roadmap yeah legal literacy and health literacy varies greatly between individuals so um you know i really think it's important to lean on you know your trusted network and, and individuals around you that maybe have had lived experience going through that. We'll put it this way. When I walked in with my 60 pages of questionnaire, he's like, no worries, sit, take a seat, mate. Let's bloody go through it. My <laughs> GP would, he's have, a weapon. would have lost his shit if yeah, I walked yeah, in and did that. Yeah, 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 that's what I was saying. It, it literally took five or six, you know, catch-ups for an hour long with, with the psychiatrist. And as you say, put it in the context of how short Australia is, you know, writ large on psychiatry at the moment. Imagine having to take up seven, eight hours of, of that one individual's workload mm. So you can fill, fill out, out some, some paperwork. Some paperwork. Yeah. No, exactly. No. And, you know, we, we, we come across people all the time that have been waiting six, you know, nine, 12 yeah, months just, six, to, yeah. just to find a healthcare provider that can, you know, provide this assessment and, and information for, for the department. And then that's, that's holding up their whole rehabilitation yeah. and, and their whole compensation journey, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, there's obviously a bit of a, a backlog, you know, in, in the department at, at the moment that they're obviously working through, but that's just making that whole experience even even longer. More so. challenging. And I can only yeah. assume you guys are like telehealth, Zoom calls, doesn't matter where you are, remote locations, yeah. dial in, and, yeah. and, and just on that as well, what would be just, I'm sure the, what's in my mind, I'm like, right, well, if I was to submit a claim right now and reach out to you guys, on average... How long would it sort of take me until I'm at least speaking to someone? Yeah, yeah. I guess you know um, part of operations is we like to provide ease and speed of access and easy uh, as far as well we provide telehealth services. So yeah. it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're rural, um, whether we connect you with your local RSL to help you out get on on the, on the call. We we can help you out no matter where you are. Uh, and at the moment we, we pride ourselves in in a four to six week turnaround and, wow. and we're stuck to that. Yeah, so that's I. Yep. But for, for those of you that don't know, that that is in, incredible to yep. to get something at that. Well, you it just took said me like seven, eight, nine months. Yeah, it took it took me six months to see a psychiatrist. Six wow. months, and he wasn't a DVA specialist. It was like right, I Pete down the road. I'm, you know, not he's awesome. He's amazing. He's very very diligent and all that sort of stuff. But you know, six months, and then you mm. guys are able to do it in that. that yep. If you yeah. are, if you are, if you need those services, I can't tell you. Please well, that's reach out to these value. Guys. That's that's invaluable, yeah. right there. Because if you are in need of, you, some people don't have bloody six months to, to wait. wait. No. Six yeah. months is way too. That's too long. Six yeah. months too long. Yeah. But if you're in there by six weeks, so yeah. Awesome. That's awesome, guys. Lads, I've loved chatting to both of you. Congratulations on both of your services. I've got one more question. Oh, I have I'm one so more sorry. question. In five years, where is your business? Oh. 
Um, yeah, I think we're really – our vision long-term is that end-to-end psychiatric service. So, you know, like I said, we, we started with psychiatric assessment services because that's the start of the journey for a lot of people. But, um, you know, obviously the next part of the of that end-to-end service is ongoing psychiatric treatment services right. in the community. Yep. Um, so, uh, you know, assessments, uh, psychiatric assessment services are in need. Um, you know, ongoing psychiatric care within the community is even more in demand. Um, you know, so, um, you know, really filling that gap for, for veterans and, and getting that uh, expert psychiatric ongoing care. Um, that relationship definitely relies on, um, you know, it's it's a, a mixed care relationship with a, a, a veteran's general practitioner. So, um, you know, the general practitioner will work with the psychiatrist uh, and the psychiatrist can provide their expert opinion and advice on what the yeah. best, um, you know, treatment, treatment. plan and, sure. and they can work together um, to get the best, best outcomes. So... Five years time, um, you know, I, I see us, you know, um, potentially opening up um, clinics uh, in, you know, all the capital cities around Australia, uh, and and offering a, a mix of of telehealth and face to face services yeah. to to not just veterans but other, um, you know, in need uh, populations and, and communities as well. Love it. Yeah, I love the fact you're branching out into. For first responders of emergency services. Yeah, yeah, and and the veterans. Whilst we all saw stuff over in Afghanistan, that was a while ago. Oh mate, in the fucking police force, he's seeing it every day. Paramedics. Yeah, exactly. Paramedics you know, are a big one. Paramedics. Yeah, yeah. And I think you know, also you know, veterans' families. You know, it's yeah. like how you get you get told well when you're in defence that the whole family is in in defence. You know, and and um, you know, it definitely the the family you know feels a lot of the time that they don't get similar supports. Uh, you know access to supports that you know the veteran has so i'd also you know love to um you know extend that support to um you know veterans families and uh, as well yeah our wives definitely need it after being married to us <laughs> to us mate yep <laughs> <laughs> and mick i can only assume mate five years you're you're not going anywhere you'll still be no nah. sitting there side yeah. by side no, with brody definitely yeah, yeah awesome, we're, we're in this together and um, yeah like i say i can't wait to see where where it, where it goes it's it's come a long way it, it warms my heart to see you so happy on the other <laughs> side mate it, re- it really does like you know yeah. like i said before we kind of had that relationship yeah. where i'm like good bloke good bloke i love seeing veterans succeed yeah. i love it it really and, fills my heart and look guys right back at you as well you know like i've been a long time follower of axon and and, and what you guys do is is absolutely amazing and and, and you know i can't Thank you enough um, for inviting us here today. No as well. worries. It's, it's funny awesome, when yeah. Luke said, he goes, oh, this bloody, this guy, Mick coming in is a good bloke. I said, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> and How'd mate, he go? you passed with flying <laughs> colours. <laughs> Thanks, Mick. Thanks, Thanks Brody. Thanks, Brody. Thanks Brody. for coming Cheers. in. Well done, Luke. Great <laughs> session. Hope you enjoyed that, ladies and gents. There's plenty of little gold nuggets, as promised, in the first couple of minutes that you might have got out of that. So the sooner you can sh- get your shit sorted when it comes to transitioning and just not being a stat that none of us want to hear about, the better. See you soon.